Good morning, folks. Hope you got a chance to check out the earthquake forecast from last night based on three separate solar factors and a planetary geometry. Meanwhile, the last 24 hours were relatively calm with only a few solar features worth noticing, like this, an aesthetic surge. No CME was produced by the 100,000 mile arc of energy, but it is pretty. We had our first gamma ray burst in a week early this morning with Genesis and the Lynx constellation up north. There was a low energy proton spike just as the day was changing in universal time, followed about two hours later by a corresponding flux in the electrons. This was due to the shift from ultra slow solar wind to more normal solar wind. The shift here is not of major speed or density, but it's such a shift from a weak previous stream that it caused a bit of instabilities to the sensitive flux. Geomagnetic shield remains calm for now. Remember the CME on the way set to hit tomorrow night. The solar flaring remains low and it's not for a lack of sunspots. They just refuse to fire. The departing group down south grew like a maniac but never gave a significant flare. Delta spot appears to remain in the center of the northern lead but it's tiny. The remaining spots are pretty well separated magnetically despite their solid size. We're also watching these incoming regions down south. The next plasma filament enters behind the northern spots here. We have a seismic swarm beneath the volcano in Iceland. Luckily, it's not Katla. Sharing the latest from Hubble, the two galaxies on the left are interacting and based on their shape and halo do not conform to traditional notions of galactic interaction. Speaking of not conforming, there's an asteroid that defies gravity. Never mind the fact that it has a tiny chance of hitting Earth 800 years from now, but it actually should not be intact given its high spin rate. It should have ripped apart, but the van der Waals forces kept her tight. Very much an electromagnetic realm of study there. Taking a look at the buoy data. I'll ask for any witness accounts of large waves or unusual surges from northeastern Australia. These are about two meter deviations, but which are not of tsunami form, just unusual, and possibly an error if nobody noticed anything. We'll keep watch in the area. Looking at Europe, we see the North Atlantic low driving across the island kingdom and into the northeastern Europe. Thunderstorm likelihoods are a straightforward result. Two storms down under, the first may have tweaked that buoy actually, but combine the left and right convergences and you're left with these watch zones tonight. US wind map shows a central convergence that'll shift slightly eastward later, and heat and moisture slipping up to the west of that as well. Mobile observatory project is in Bismarck today, right in the middle of the storm zone. If you live nearby, we're having an open meet at the La Quinta off 94 at exit 159 from 1 to 3 p.m. today. World Thunderstorm Watch Zones, Current Conditions, followed by Shots of Our Star to Close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.